Hello internet land, and it's time to talk about bass pickups. Mm. How exciting. I have here a box. Lindy Thraling, or how you pronounce it, jazz bass pickups. Something I've never done before, I think. Change bass pickups. Done many guitar pickups, single coils. Not P90s. Lots of humbuckers. Um, I tend not to go for stacked or um, rail pickups, it's not my thing. I don't find any I particularly like. But you know, many things I've done. I've swapped magnets. Uh, I've not actually swapped different coils and done anything silly like that, but uh, I've messed about a bit. Never done that on a bass. Just considering I play bass arguably more than I play guitar, you think, why has he not done this before? Why does, has he not hot rodded a bass? Well, today's the day. My trusty Fender Jazz bass, which I've got not so very long ago, still has a stock pickup in I understand. So I'm going to swap them for these. Oh, but first, let's have a little listen to it. As it is. So, this is the bass in question. Both pickups at the same time. It's just the uh, bridge pickup. And just the neck pickup. No, I'm not going to do one of those silly fast forward things. They're very clever and everything, I'm sure I just about get it, but a bit boring. So I've got the old pickups out. These are them. And this is you get with them. Um, that's like cheaper pickups, really. Um, so these are supposed to be single coil pickups. Single coil pickups are traditionally, this is where they were originally made. These pole pieces would have been actual bars of magnet going through your coil. Um, hooked up to some wire, move the vibrator string above it, induces an EMF, get a signal through. That's how they work. Um, but cheaper ones, and use these on humbuckers as well. It's, um, it's, a, it's a cost thing, so it's not a necessarily what sounds best. I don't actually know what sounds best, but make them more cost effective rather than having lots of individual magnets these are just blank slugs of steel um, with a magnet underneath and that looks to me like it might be a ceramic, ceramic magnet as well um, all these little tiny details can affect the tone in magic guitar tone land um, but these are the ones I've just taken out these are fender pickups genuine fender parts um, there. Genuine fender covers. Um, I've measured the DC resistance on these. Um, the bridge was 5.65 and the neck was 5.35 or something like that. That kind of amount. And I also measured in the new pickups. And it was while I was doing this, I realised something had gone wrong in the boxing department. I'm not sure whether this was at Base Direct, where I bought these from. Um, or at Lindy Flarling uh, in America, but this is one of their um, standard jazz bass pickups. As you can see, it's just great big loads and loads of coils of wire in comparison to ah, no magnet at the bottom. Yeah, that, that, that's the difference in construction. You know, <laughs> Not even vaguely look the same. Look at the difference in different amount of coil, you know, the depth of the coils. This is what you're paying for. Details, little details, and well, quite big details. When you're, you you won't see it when when it's fixed, but it will affect the sound. More coils, more magnet, um, more coils there are for the magnet 
magnetic field to move through when the string of breaks, therefore a bigger signal. I'm going to go into the maths, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's pretty straightforward, believe it or not. Um, but basically, more calls, more signal, better. Better noise to um, signal to noise ratio, but than anything else. Anyway, while I was doing this, so this is the bridge pickup, this is what I was expecting it to look like. This is the neck pickup, which looks a bit different. Why has it got this tape around it rather than just being having expected coils? Why does it look like it's two separate coils of wire? So this isn't a standard Indy Farling. This is one of their split ones. So it's got two separate coils, thus um, doing home cancelling, which is a great thing. But these are a load more expensive. I won't actually say how much, because uh, some of my band much paid for these. Um, but they're noticeably more expensive. Um, not twice the price, but you know, something like 75% more than one of these. What would have I paid for it? It's two of these, not one of these and one of these. Definitely not two of these. So what do I do? Um, it's five to six, base direct to close. Um, also, they're an hour's drive away. I definitely wasn't going to drive over there. Um, and I've essentially got something for free. So <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is solder it in. Uh, I will email base direct and let them know what's happened. Um, and it's only really a problem if I don't like how this sounds to me. I don't think they can really come back and say, boy, that's ours. Um, well, we'll let them know what's happened. Um, you never know, they might insist. And if, if they do uh, insist that I return this and get the proper one back, so be it. Um, I'm, they're a lovely bunch of people. I like to keep them on the right side. And anyway, bonus. Anyway, the DC resistance, these are lots higher. This, especially this one. Um, Oh, excuse me, I'm digging for my phone. So, this is 11.4k versus 5.6. It's you know, over twice the DC resistance. That's another thing. The more DC resistance, the bigger signal you'll get out. Um, other things can affect the, how much signal you get out, distance from the strings, the weight of your strings, um, how much a magnetic field each of these pole pieces is producing, all these things produce more output. They can also compromise your tone if they're overdone. Lots and lots of turnings of really thin work produce a very muffled tone, a very compressed. Um, and other things can happen. Um, but fundamentally, more signal is better than less signal. Bam. So anyway, this is 11.4. Loads hotter than normal, which I'm taking out. Um, the neck bracket is uh, 9.16, still loads hotter than the one I'm taking out. That was uh, 5.356. You yeah. know, should be getting a lot more signal out of these. Let's uh, solder it all back together and see what it sounds like. Oh, right, been a few days. Um, it wasn't a, a quick change. It was a quick change. I, I just then ran out of time to do videos and got engrossed in other things. Um, so I haven't had time to do the recording. So pickups from now in. I uh, had a panic because I didn't realise that uh, bridge and neck pickups on jazz basses are actually different sizes. And also I misread the labelling. Um, I was trying to fit bridge pickup in a neck pickup and they're about 3 mil difference in length so it wasn't going to go in the hole. I realised my mistake. I also had some nerfing issues. But does it sound better? Very difficult to be objective. Um, so many things can change. I didn't measure what height the pickups were to start with, so these might be a bit lower, they might be a bit higher. All these things change. I might have noticed controls on the amp. I don't know. I really don't know. So let's start with the neck pickup. Also, this is 
has noticed. Um, these are the same strings, I haven't changed the strings. Um, it's just picking up the harmonics a bit better than it was. Onto the bridge pickup. Personal opinion, spend a bit of money. But these are Lindy Franlins, um, possibly not the cheapest ones. I think a standard set of Seymour Duncan um, jazz bass pickups would be, be a bit cheaper, but they're not the most stupidly priced things out there. Or oh, actually, the split coil ones at full price. Yeah, I think. <laughs> it's one of those things you can spend as much money as you want. But well worth it, really worth it. It just gives it a, a very good bass indeed. Um, that little thing which was missing, which is really good tone from the electrics. Ooh. Next experiment. Put some actives in there. No, I don't think so. <laughs> that involves too much body work. 